Bohrrät, Laborrät, Lege. Hi, this is Miguel. Today I'm back with another uh, walkthrough of an S release. I will take a look at Bohrrät Laborrä today and show you how a two-player game could be played like. Um, Orat Labora is a new game by Uwe Rosenberg. It's an economic game with elements of Agricola, Le Havre and some new ideas to it. Although this isn't a review, I have to say I like it a lot. And yeah, I will now show you how a two-player game could go like. Um, I will play one player and tag along the other player, so it might not be optimal moves for either player. Also, I have the German version of the game. Uh, which shouldn't be a problem, I mean the building names are in German and I'll try to translate them, maybe I'll stumble upon a few names, but I guess we'll be fine. Have fun! Okay, so I've set up a game for two players in the Ireland scenario, and before we start let's just take a look at the setup and the different components. Over here we have the heartland of one player, with three already built buildings, also some woods and some moors. Um, each player also gets one of each of the six starting basic goods, so that's grain, livestock, wood, peat, coins and clay. Also each player has three clergymen, two lay brothers and a prior, and a set of four settlements. Then in the middle we have the production wheel and all the resource tokens start in the zero space. Also I've used the production wheel for two players, of course, because this is a two player game. Also here is the resource token for stone, which will come into the play in this round in the second rotation of the wheel, so it's gonna be a while until it comes into play. Over here we have the marker that the first settlement will happen in the first rotation of the wheel when the beam hits basically the spot on the wheel and yeah so much for the production wheel over here we have the landscapes that players can buy to extend the heartlands also the deck of cards for additional forests and moors over here we have the starting start building display um, so these seven buildings are available from the start of the game, in a two-player game. And the other buildings are separated into four stacks, and they will come into play in the different settlement phases. So basically in settlement phase A, or after settlement phase A, this stack of buildings will come into play. Then over here we have all the different goods, <coughs> goods on their chips. And finally, we have a player aid, where we can see the different landscape types, how a round turns out, what, action there, what actions there are in the game, what additional actions are, and finally, which scenario we're playing, the island scenario, and what kind of goods are available. Okay, then I guess we're ready to start the first round. The game works a little bit differently in a two-player game than in a three or four-player game, because each player takes a turn and at the start of their turn they will advance the wheel and then they take two actions and then it's the other player's turn. Okay, so the blue player is starting and for his first action he decides he wants some wood. So cutting wood is one of the actions you can take and what you'll do, you'll remove one of the cards a forest card of course, and all it says look at the production wheel and get as many wood as the wood counter says on the production wheel. So if you look over here we see that the wood counter is currently on one. If you move it to the zero space and we get a wood from the supply. So that was the first action and with the second action we're going to build a building namely this cloister yard over here and you see it's yellow, that means it's a cloister building, so it has to go next to other cloister buildings, so basically we don't have any other option than putting it here. And finally, since we just built a building and our prior is still unused, we can immediately put him into the building and use it. 
and it says we can give away three different goods to get six of the same basic good. And of course, sorry, first I have to pay two wood to actually uh, build the building. Okay, so I'm now going to give away these three markers, three different goods, and I get six of the same kind, six grain. So that was the first player's first turn. Then the second player, at the start of his turn, we had one the wheel. Then the second player decides to use his basic cloister building with his pawn, with one of the lay brothers. And here it says, get as many coins as the coin marker is on the production wheel. So the coin marker is at the two space, so we put it on the zero space, and we get two coins. Then as an additional action, which you can take one off on your turn, no, sorry, as an additional action we want to buy a new landscape, and that you can do once per turn. There are other additional actions which you can do multiple times on your turn. So, we want one of these, it costs three coins, which we now have, since we just took two, but we want it on the coastal side. So it goes here, we pay the three coins, and we have a second action. And what we want to do now is build a building, the houseboat. It costs wood, it has to go on water, which we conveniently just have right now, and we put it here, and we pay the wood. Then our prior is free, so we take it, can use the building, and we'll get a wood, a mold, a coin, and a peat. Okay, so this were the first two turns in the game. On the first player's turn, we advance the wheel. And the first player decides to use his clay mount, which says, look at the wheel and get that much clay where the clay production uh, resource counter is. So clay is at two. We put it on the zero. We get two clay. And second action is you want to build a building. The uh, moldery, I guess. So basically a building where you get yeah, mold. We put it down here and we pay to clay. The second player advances the wheel and he wants to cut wood so he moves the forest card and for a change he doesn't take the wood counter because that is only a two but instead of the choker which is a three so this would give him three wood and then he builds a building which in this, this case is the fake lighthouse, it has to go on the coastal space, which he has, and it costs two wood and a clay. The blue player advances the wheel and then decides that he wants to visit his own barnyard, where he can get either grain from the production wheel or sheep, he, or livestock. He decides to get livestock. So this is put here, and he gets four of them. So now he can't use any clergyman any longer. He can't build a building, so basically all he can do is either cut peat or fell a tree. So he decides to cut peat. The card is removed. The card is removed to zero, so he will get four peat. And then on the red player's turn, before he starts and turns the wheel, we see that the blue player has all of their persons reused, so they are all returned to him. And then we normally advance the wheel. And he decides that he wants to use his fake lighthouse, so he goes in there. He gets three coins and a choice of either a beer or a whiskey, and he decides to take a beer. And finally he decides to build another building, which is the stone vendor, I guess, and it costs a wood, 
and he puts it here. At the beginning of the blue player's turn, several things happen. First, we note that the red player has used all the clergymen, so he gets them all back. Then we advance the wheel, but it pushes forward the cyan settlement marker, so there's a settlement phase. A settlement phase has three steps. First thing is that we put the marker onto the next settlement indicator, that is the B over here. Second, each player is allowed to and build a settlement from the four settlements he has available. The blue player wants to build this, I guess, small town or something, um, and it costs zero energy and seven food. He places it here, and he pays the seven food with three sheep, which are worth two food, and a grain, which is worth one food. Oops. The red player decides to build this fishing village, which has to go on the coastal space, he has that, of course. It costs 3 energy and 8 food. He places it here. The 3 energy he can pay with a wood and a peat, and the 8 food with a beer, which is really nourishing apparently, a grain and a sheep. So that was the second step of the settlement phase. The third step is that these new buildings are being put in the, into the building display, and yeah, I'll do that now and be right back. Okay, I've put the new buildings from the settlement A stack into the building display. Also, each player has received a new settlement to use in the next settlement phase. And now we can continue with Blue's turn. We already have advanced the wheel. And what Blue does is first he goes into his basic cloister building to get coins from the wheel. Coins are at 4. Then he decides to cut wood. Card is removed. Wood is at four. And finally, as an additional action, he decides to build a new uh, landscape tile. One of these. He has a choice where one has two woods, a moor, and two cliff spaces, or one with only one wood, three planes and a cliff, and he decides to take that one. He puts it down here, and he pays two coins. The red player advances the wheel, and then decides to use his fake lighthouse again. So he gets three coins, and beer or whiskey, he takes beer again. And as last, last action, he decides to cut peat. The card is removed. Peat is at 2, the choker is at 3, so he decides to take the choker and gets 3 peat. Blue player advances the wheel. Then he decides he wants to build a building. This uh, sculptorium. It's a cloister building, so he has to put it either here or here. He chooses this base. It costs a wood and a straw, so wood, and you can always flip grain to straw, so wood and a straw are being paid. And then you can use his prior to immediately use the building, still it's the same action. What happens? He has to pay a coin, but then he gets a book, a meat, and a whiskey. So he flips the coin, basically spending it, and there's the book, and also here's the meat and whiskey. As a second action, the blue player decides to give a work order to the other player, so he pays him a coin and asks him to use the stone vendor. So the red player puts one of his pawns in there. And the stone vendor you can up to five times pay two food and one energy to get a stone. The blue player decides to do this four times, so basically that's eight food and four energy. 8 food is meat, grain, and livestock, and 4 energy is 2 peat, so he pays all this, and gets 4 stone. The red player advances the wheel, and 
and decides to use his clay mount where he will collect clay from the production wheel. Clay is at five. So that's five clay for him. And then he decides to give the work order to the other player. So he again pays him a coin and tells him to move into his cloister yard where he can get six of the same basic goods for three different goods. So he decides to pay a coin, a mold and a clay, three different goods, and he wants six wood for it. At the start of the blue player's turn we see that both players have all their clergymen used, so they both get them back. Then the blue player advances the wheel and he decides to go to his barnyard to take the grain that has accumulated here. So that's eight grain. Okay, and then he decides he wants to do something with this grain. So he goes to the mold tree where you can turn any amount of grain into the same amount of straw and mold. So he decides to flip six grain over to the straw side and he also gets six mold. The red player advances the wheel and he decides to visit his own stone vendor. He decides to get three stone, so that would be six food and three energy, which he pays with a wood and a peat coal and a beer and a coin. So he gets three stone. Oops. And then he decides to build a building. The cloister workshop. It's a cloister building, it costs three wood. Pays three wood. And now he can immediately lose with, use it with his prior. And it says, up to three times, turn clay into ceramics for one energy each, and up to one time, turn one stone into an ornament for one energy each. So what he does, three clay are turned into ceramics, one stone is turned into an ornament for four energy altogether, so he uses two peat coal to pay this four energy. The blue player advances the wheel and realizes that the moment he has been working for so long has finally come because he decides to build the brewery. The brewery costs two stone and a straw. He decides to put it here. Two stone and a straw. And he can immediately use it with his prior. Any amount of grain and the same amount of malt can be turned into beer and after that you can sell a beer for seven gold. Or seven coins. So he has collected six grain and malt, so the grain goes away. The malt is flipped over to the beer side and they can sell one beer for seven coins. Um, before his second action, from these seven coins he would like to buy another one of these land strips which costs him three and I see that earlier I forgot to actually put a forest on there so we do that now so one forest here for earlier and one forest now and then as a second action he decides to build yet another building this stone circle here that costs a stone not surprisingly, stone are costing stone. Then it's the um, red player's turn. So what happens is that the blue player gets his pawns back. And then we advance the wheel and we see it's another settlement phase. So the marker first is put from B to C over here. Then the red player is allowed to build a settlement and he chooses the artist colony 
that'll cost him one energy and five food. So he pays five food with coins and the one energy with a wood. And the blue player wants to build also his artist colony and he wants to put it here. And the five food he pays with a beer and the energy with the wood. Okay, so the next in order is to put out the new buildings. And I'll do that and be right back. Okay, after the settlement phase, we have new buildings, each player has a new settlement, and it's still the red player's turn. So what he does, he decides to cut Pete over here. So this is removed. Pete is at 6, so that's put to 0. And he receives 6 Pete. And then he decides to build a building, which is the Pete Colliery. It costs a clay. He puts it over here, pays a clay. And that's basically it. I will stop the game at this point. I think you have a good impression. What I want to do now is give you an, another impression of how the game could play out if it were to continue and also show you how the scoring is done. So if you take a look at the new buildings, those are really powerful because they're already the B buildings and they are, well, they get even more powerful as the game progresses. So for example in the chapel here, you can turn a coin into a book and then you can turn beer and whiskey into, into relics which are worth 8 points. Then we have the stone mason, which will allow you to get stone from the production wheel. At the moment this is not possible because the stone marker is still off, but in a couple of rounds it will come on the board. Until now you can use the joker to actually get stone. Then this one is not really new, but we haven't talked about it, so this is the slaughter house, where you can turn livestock and grain into meat. This is the uh, shipyard, where you can turn wood into ornaments and stacks of coins, which are worth two points, so six points altogether for two wood. Also, its economic value is huge. And finally, the whiskey distillery, which will allow you to well, make whiskey. Also, each player has received a new settlement card, which look like this, looks like this, and you see that the energy and food costs are ever increasing. Now, for the scoring. Of course, this has only been after the second settlement round, so the game would go on for a lot of time more. But, yeah, let's just show you how it's done. So, what we do first is take a look at the settlements and score the red value of the settlement itself, the so-called dwelling value, and all the dwelling values of the adjacent buildings, but only orthogonally, not diagonally. So, if you take a look at here, that's 2, and 4, that's 6, and 3 is 9 and another 4, that's 13 for this settlement. And down here we have 5 and 2, that's 7, and another 7 is 14, and 5 is 19, and another 6 is 25. So for the settlements the blue players got 25 and 13 respectively. Then if we take a look at the economic building, the, the beige value of all the buildings, that's 5 and 2 is 7, and 0 is so 7. 7 again, 11, 20, 19, 22, 25, so 25 economic value, and down here when we take a look at the goods, so this stack of coins is worth 2, another one for the whiskey, and another one for the book, that's another 5, so altogether the blue player has 68 points. Now the red player, so that's 5 and 3 is 8 and 2 is 10, so this artist colony scores 10 points. Over here the fishing value, that's 6, another 6 for the houseboat, that's 12, another 5 for the fake uh, lighthouse, that's 17, so 10 and 17. Economic value is 8 and 5 is 13, for 17, 23, 30, 29 for the economic value. And for the goods, he gets another 13, so that's 10, and 17, and 29, and 13, that's 69. So the red player is 69, the blue player is 68. Of course, this doesn't really say anything because it's 
the game is not over yet. But anyway, I just wanted to show you how the scoring is done. So this was my walkthrough of Overhead Labora. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please feel free to ask them in the thread where I posted this video or just send me a personal message. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Until next time, goodbye.